statement. To discredit the Bible so they have a reason to not believe. But I'm going to make a statement today. And the statement I'm going to make is this. The Bible is an anvil that has worn out many hammers. The Bible is an anvil that's worn out a lot of hammers. Educated and very um, intelligent people have tried to dispute um, and refute the Bible and failed. No one has ever, has ever been able to do it. The only way you can do it is by dishonesty. Otherwise, if you were to take the Bible and examine it the same way you examine evidence, there is archaeological evidence that proves to you that the Bible has never been changed. There is internal evidence that proves to you the Bible has never been changed. There is even external evidence that proves to you that the Bible has never been changed. If you were to examine the Bible as a historical document, just as a historical document, you will be so surprised. You will find now that the Bible is the most historically reliable work of antiquity. That's what you're going to find out. The same way they examine the works of, let's say, Josephus, or the same way they examine, let's say, Roman history, do the same thing to the Bible and see what comes out. The Bible carries so much evidence, it's staggering. But here's the thing. When we don't know how much evidence speaks for the word of God, it's easy to be deceived into thinking that the Bible was changed. I put it to you that the word of God, that the Bible, is the most reliable work of antiquity. If you were to subject the Bible to the same tests that you do your works of history, the same test, or you gonna be you, you'll be surprised if you are being honest. Because you see, as people we have a tendency to twist and rewrite history so it can suit our ideologies but otherwise the people that lived with Jesus the people that talked with Jesus the people that preached with Jesus you know them as the disciples of the apostles Every single one of them, every single one of them, are on record as having said that Jesus said he was the, he is the Son of God. Did you know that all the twelve apostles died for that statement? Some were sown asunder; they were sown in two by a hacksaw. Because they wouldn't denounce the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. 
I believe um, Matthew died in India. They killed Matthew in India. They shot him with, 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 uh, with poisonous arrows ahead. The Apostle Matthew died in India for refusing to renounce the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. Peter, the Apostle Peter was crucified upside down for refusing to denounce the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. Every single one of those 12 Apostles were killed for that statement. And they were willing, they willingly laid down their lives for the testimony of Jesus. Would they go to the grave for something that they knew to be a lie? Do you really think that all of the 12 apostles would give up their own lives for something that's a, that, that, that they know to be a lie? Because these guys traveled with Jesus, they walked with Jesus, they ate with Jesus, they laughed with Jesus, they were in the ministry with Jesus, and all of them say the same thing, that Jesus is the Son of God, because that's what they heard him say. All of them heard him say that he is the Son of God, and they were willing to die for that statement. Do you really think that the Apostles would die for something that they know to be a lie? Would the Apostles die for something they know to be a lie? Yes, Joy. You could do that. Long time no see. <laughs> the man can walk a pool ball with so much force and power. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.